Hi there, welcome or welcome back. My name is Rosie Rivera and for today's class I'm sharing how to make this perpetual calendar in cold porcelain clay. I hope you like this project. Let's get started. Now to begin we're going to need to cut out each of these pieces from the template. You can find the template on our website. So I'm just cutting Every, all the instructions are there, but you will notice that I mentioned how many pieces you need of each one of these. So for that top one you need two, then for this tiny rectangular one you need three, and so on. Once you have that cut out, we're going to get gold porcelain clay. I'm using the natural color, so no extra dyes or paint added. And I'm just going to stretch that out so it's even. You can use these like kebab sticks if you don't have anything else and it will help you keep the roller steady and keep the the paste or a little con the one we're stretching out keep it the same thickness all throughout you can also use a pasta roller if you have one of those but if you don't this works just as well and I keep calling them kebab sticks but they're skewers and once it's even we're just going to place our piece in here making sure we can cover it all around and then we're going to add glue to it on both sides I'm also using a brush just to spread that glue evenly remember the one I'm using is the same one I used for the cold porcelain recipe and just spreading that out with the brush and then adding some pressure and like I mentioned adding some glue on the other side as well and on the edges this area right here and then just continue wrapping the clay all around it now I'm just going to add a little bit of pressure but I don't want to press it too much because that will affect the shape so I'm just pressing everything lightly and I'm going to add some glue on the shortest edge here well the longest edge sorry and then on the sides as well and I'm just going to start joining the clay on the sides not all of it at once just going small areas and then I'm going to start cutting and I'm cutting them together so it looks like a single seam and it sort of creates a seal. And then we're covering these edges on the cardboard so everything's going to look very smooth and more delicate. And I'm just passing the roller over this section just to make sure it's very, very smooth. And we're going to do the same thing on the other edges. Now once we're done it's going to look like this. And with a little bit of Vaseline I'm just going to go and smooth down the edges even more. Just like this. And at least to me this looks kind of like the light switch cover thing right now and now we're just going to move on and give it a little bit of color so I'm using this brown eyeshadow here a very light brown and I'm just going to go over all the edges since I want it to look in this sort of color it's going to look beige in the end once it dries since again I'm using natural clay it doesn't have any colors or dyes or paint added to it and I'm just giving that that like vintage look here and we're gonna do the same thing for all these other pieces and I'm gonna do the little rectangles right now these are the last pieces I've done I already finished everything else off camera just because it's the same process now I'm just updating the template here because instead of three pieces we're only gonna need two actually so you know the template you get will definitely be up to date 
and we're going to do the same thing here get two of these cardboard pieces together just so it's thicker and I'm just going to do the same thing and just wrap around all of it remembering to add glue to the edges and the other side as we go along and once we're done it's going to look like this again just remember to smooth everything down and to add the shading and once we have all of them ready, they're going to look like this. And now we can move on and start gluing the pieces together. So these smaller rectangles are... Oh, you'll see it in a bit. They're sort of like shelves. And I'm just adding a little bit of pressure here. So everything sticks nicely together. And we're just holding it right now, but what's actually going to hold everything together are the sides, which are these sort of half moons. Well, more like a quarter of a moon. So you can add the glue to the side piece or add it directly to the pieces we're attaching the side piece to. And I'm just aligning everything to make sure it's on the right spot. And then just adding a little bit of pressure so everything sticks together. Now once we're done here, it's going to look like this. And I'm adding a little bit of cornstarch here. Just so it's a little bit drier than it is right now. And for this other piece, I'm just going to measure 4 centimeters from the top, going down. I'm adding a mark here, just so I know where to add it. And then I'm going to glue it in place. And then just placing it where I made those marks. Just like this. Same for this other piece. I'm just going to add glue on all sides. And then I'm going to place it at the top right here. On top of the piece we just added. And it's going to look like this. Remember to press it well just so everything stays together and stays in place. And I'm going to work on adding some more detail and a better finish to the edges. So I got this sort of light brown, more like a beige color, this tan color. And I'm just going to stretch that out until I get roughly 10 or centimeters long. And then we're going to make it flat. Again, I'm just using the roller here. And we need this one piece to be at least one centimeter wide. And just do the same thing to the entire piece. And once we have all of it, it's stretched out. It should be roughly 40 centimeters. And I'm just cutting off one of these sides, this rounded sides here. And we're going to start covering all around the base of our little calendar piece holder. Just going all around, making sure it doesn't overlap that space right there 
because we need it to be right on the edge, right on the border. And then it's up to you if you want to go also around the back. In my case, I'm just doing the sides and the front. So again, just making sure this doesn't overlap that space we've left there. And I'm going to do the same thing on these side edges here. But I'm going to start at by making the edges for this front part here. Because I want these sides to be a single strand. It's better just to make sure. It's better to help us avoid those like seams where both pieces of clay meet together. And I'm just going to make the side ones roughly the same size. This one is also made out of one tablespoon of clay. And I stretched it out to 40 centimeters one more time. And I'm going to place it on the top here. I'm just trying to keep that aligned to the outer edge. Since we're going to be adding the ones on the sides now. And this just keeps everything nice and well aligned. So I'm just going to start adding these, starting from the bottom, going upwards, adding enough glue here everywhere. Well, we'll connect this piece just to make sure it stays in place. Especially where it connects with other pieces, just like it. I just left a small space, or like a small excess at the top, so I can curve it towards the back. And I just lowered it towards the sides as well. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Always cutting off the what the end, the circular end. And now I'm just going to make one more piece which you're seeing here so I can attach it to those back sides there. And now I'm just going to make sure it's well connected to the strip at the top and at the bottom. And just cutting off the excess here. Just like that. Just to cover the sides. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now once we're done it's going to look just like this one. But since I'm always trying to keep those seams hidden, I'm just adding a little bit of water and then running the rubber brush over those connections so everything blends together nicely. And it looks like a single piece. This is completely up to you. It's just a visual thing. And just going over those sides, trying to make them a little more round. And then this part here, for example, that middle shelf, I'm not trying to blend it into a single piece. I'm trying to keep it looking like a separate shelf. I'm just adding more water as I go through if needed to keep everything smooth. And that just helps me work on the clay even easier. Well, even better. It makes it even easier. I'm just doing the same thing all around. So working on that top one here. Very lightly gliding that brush. You don't have to apply a lot of pressure. And once you're done with everything all around it and you let that water dry, it's going to look like this. And now we can go back in and add some shading. Again, I'm using, these is just eyeshadow, but you can also use these like dry pastels or chalk pastels. And then just grind them a little bit and get that powder. You can use that same powder all over, just like I'm using the eyeshadow here. And I'm just going around the rectangle for this one, but it's completely up to your own style decisions here. 
Now, as you see, I'm just getting a little bit of sponge and I'm um, taking apart some pieces here. Of course, you can use scissors for this, but using your hands and just like plucking the pieces of sponge out makes it look more organic, in my opinion. So that's what I'm doing here and just dabbing it lightly on that gold paint so I can apply it all around the sides here. And those little strips we made earlier as well. And I'm going to do this all around the piece. Once we're done, it's going to look like this right here. And now we're going to let it dry and we're going to continue and actually start working with the cubes or the sections for the days and the months. Now for each cube, we're going to need one, well, two tablespoons of cold porcelain clay. And for the rectangles for the months, we're only going to need one tablespoon. So I'm going to start working on the cube right here. I'm just kneading the, cl the clay, forming it into a ball. Trying to keep it very smooth with no cracks or lumps. So just get, we just have to knead it more. More and more. And now I'm going to very slowly start giving it sort of a cube shape with my hands here. It's not going to be completely square like it's not going to have square edges they're going to be sort of round and that's okay that's what we're going for here if you prefer going for more of a, a dice look so completely square feel free to do so and now I'm just measuring this one here because I need it to be three centimeters wide on every side. So if I need to make adjustments, this is the right time to do them. Now there's a tool just like this one I'm holding here that I got as part of the this toolkit and it's specifically to flatten pieces but like you know how I prefer to work and I don't like having too many tools I've worked with clay before I was able to buy separate tools for it um, I know we can use that alternatives we already have at home so you can definitely use sort of like rulers not all of them will work if they have a design or a group here but if you have a flat one they work perfectly and if you have the lids on these sort of acrylic boxes, those work perfectly fine as well too. And as you can see, that's all I'm doing here, just making it very flat on each side. And my main goal is to, to try to help you work on, well, start working or continue working on clay without having to buy all these separate tools. If you can buy it, that works perfectly fine, but if you can't, or don't want to, you can still make everything we're sharing on the channel here. Now I'm going to set that aside and let it dry. I have one dry here. As you can see, it well, it helps you see also how much it shrinks and how different the color can look at the end. This one I let it dry for roughly two days as a reference and well now I'm going to move on and start working on the rectangle. Remember this is just one tablespoon of cold porcelain clay. Just doing the same thing, kneading it thoroughly, making sure I don't have any bumps. And after we're done kneading them using our hands, I'm just moving on to kneading it against the surface here. And I'm sorry for the table shaking. Definitely need to readjust the camera. And I'm just going to roll this one to stretch it out, but applying enough strength so everything looks even all around. And we're going to do the same thing first using our hands just to start giving that rectangular shape that's sort of straight on each side instead of round. And then just keep going there. 
Again, just tapping lightly so it so we can keep it even all around. And as a reference, if our cubes are three centimeters wide, then the rectangles need to be twice that size. So we're gonna have two cubes on top of the month rectangles. Now once we have that ready here, we're gonna do the same thing and then just use a ruler or that acrylic box lid or anything else you have just to make it flat on each side. Just like this. And there we go. Now we have this 3D rectangle here. And remember we need it to be 6 centimeters wide and I'm gonna make this one 6.5 centimeters just to account for shrink shrinkage. Once we're done and it's all set on all four sides, we're going to leave it here and set it aside. But before we let it fully dry, I'm just going to go in and add some shading. Again, I'm using the light brown eyeshadows here and just going all around the edges, all those corners. Still keeping, keeping it very clear where that center is by not adding any shading there. Just going over all the sides with the brush and then just blending it out. It's, as you can see, it's very subtle. Just like that. And when the clay is still fresh, you know it's going to look sort of white. It's this natural color. But once it dries, it looks like this. It's, it's also kind of transparent if it, if you make a thin piece, but since we're making very thick pieces, we have a solid color in the end. So we're making two cubes just to account for the day, the date numbers and three rectangles to account for the months. And now I'm going with a liner brush, going all around with a little bit of gold paint just to highlight those edges a bit more, making them very thin. I just want to help each side stand out more. Also remembering to connect the sides as you move on along to the next side so not keeping like separate squares we're just going over the existing edges now on the months i'm mostly highlighting the these longer sides not the small edges there since those ones won't really be visible on our calendar once we set everything up And now we can go ahead and start working on adding the numbers. You can draw them directly or you can use a pencil just to keep them all sort of the same. This is completely up to you. I prefer working directly with the paint, but I'm using a pencil here just so you have a reference of what I'm making. So you can see here in this example, these, this zero is a little bit smaller than the one. And since the numbers will be side by side in the end, I want to try to keep them all the same size. If you waited for your clay to be fully dry, you can definitely use an eraser like I'm doing here. And you won't run into any issues. And I'm just drawing that zero again. Now I'm adding the two, three. Now the number style is completely up to you as well. This is just the ones I'm making. I'm going to make the four here on the side and the five on the other side. Now we've covered all the sides for this one. Now on the other cube, we're going to make another zero.
another one. Another two. And now we can move on to continue the numbers we have on the other one. So I'm going to make a 6 here. And I'm just going to keep it as ambiguous as possible because I wanted to use it as both a 6 and a 9. Now I'm making a 7. And an 8. Now you can see here why we're making some of these numbers twice. And as we move on to the next one, we start using the numbers we made before. So using that 0, 8, using that 6 again as a 9. And now we move on to 10, 11. And you'll notice how you need to rearrange the cube sometimes as you move along. But you can use this calendar any year, any month, any time. It will work. And it's personally me and my family, we find it very fun just to update it every day and move the little blocks around. It's very entertaining. So you're seeing every number here, 18, 19, 20, 27, 28, that same 6 is a 9, 29, 3 for 30, and 31. There we go, we have every day of the month. Now we're going to start adding the months. We have 4 months per little rectangle here. And I'm going to use a very thin font, font style, and very tall so it can cover the entire area. And that's going to make it very legible. And I am making it thin because we also need to fit in the longer months. So like September, November, December. And I want to need enough space for that. The shorter months might look a little bit shorter. But in the end, they'll just look even, which is what I'm going for here. Now moving on to the next one, February, and you're seeing it in Spanish here because I'm, I made this video for this like in Spanish, so instead of March, you're seeing Marzo. But you can do the same thing in English. And we're going to do the same thing for all the other months until we get to December. Now we're going to move on and start painting them. I'm going to use paint since I want to use this calendar for my living room. And these are the colors I'm using there. So beige, gold, and brown. And I'm just going to trace the number with paint and my liner brush. I'm just making them a little bit thicker than they are right now, just so they're more noticeable and they stand out. Just like that. 
and I'm going to do the same thing on all of them, just going over the lines we already made. And this is completely customizable, like I said, this, these colors are completely up to you. You can choose your, perf your preferred color palette and just whatever works for you. And since I'm focused on, well, this project is made specifically for Valentine's Day right now. That's what I'm, that's what we're celebrating soon. I decided to highlight February in red for love and friendship. This is completely up to you. I prefer it specifically, like all of the colors being the same. So everything would be in brown for me. But I just want to share how you can do something a little bit different. And there we go. And I'm going to do the same thing for all other months. Just remember to let it dry between each one you're painting since as you start flipping them around we might smudge the paint or something. So I'm just letting them dry in between each, each one. And now that we're done, I'm going to set the last months in the back. Today that I'm making this, it's January, well it's January 14th, so I'm going to set that at the end. And again, since I'm making this for a February project, I'm going to set the date for February 14th. Just like that. And now we have our little perpetual calendar right here. And it, again, it's perpetual because you can use it any month, any year, and it will never like be outdated or stop working. It will work every year. And this top shelf is for any decoration you want. So for example, I'm using two sh little sheep here. We can also add a small fox that I made for an October challenge. You can see those pictures on my Instagram account. And since I'm, again, this is a Valentine's project, I'm adding some hearts at the top here just for decoration. Now, as the months move along, we we'll can definitely update this and make different figurines. So it's, it's very fun, very interactive. And that's it. So I really hope you liked today's project. My name is Rosy Rivera. And thank you for watching my channel. Many blessings.